Well, for more on this story, we can take you live uh, to Tokyo. France 24's Julia Kim is standing by for us. Uh, Julia, this story then has uh, provoked uh, a lot of uh, reaction. But before we get to that, uh, we know that Johnny Kitago had always uh, denied these allegations. His niece has now admitted them. Walk us through uh, this rather uh, complex case, Julia. Well, first of all, it's really hard to overstate just how much influence uh, Johnny Kitagawa had in Japan. He was known as the godfather of J-pop, uh, Japanese pop. He created this entire genre of Japanese boy bands. His career spanned over 60 years, and uh, during that time, he raped and sexually abused young boys, young men, who all hoped to become future pop stars with total impunity. Now, he was able to do that because Japanese media, as the report stated, that largely kept quiet about all the allegations that circulated around him uh, over the decades. But there, had, there was one Japanese magazine, though, that did publish an expose detailing some of the survivors' testimonies back in the year 2000. Now, this was over 20 years ago. Now, that, uh, that uh, publication was sued for defamation uh, by Johnny Kitagawa, but a civil court eventually found, uh, before that, a civil court actually found that Johnny Kitagawa's victims uh, had actually been abused. Yet no charges came of this. Johnny Kitagawa was able to continue working well into his 80s until he died in 2019, having never faced charges and having been buried uh, as a cultural icon in Japan. Now, obviously, this changed uh, this March when the BBC uh, published their documentary with uh, testimonies from some of these survivors. And since that documentary, a tidal wave of support has been generated for these victims because more and more young men have come out speaking of their ordeal. Now, uh, uh, because of this growing public pressure, uh, Johnny and Associates, the talent agency run by uh, Johnny's, uh, Johnny Kizugawa's niece, uh, Judy Fujishima, was forced to launch an external probe. They did that, and the external probe last week found that uh, Judy Fujishima had in fact lied to the public when she said that she didn't know about any of the, of the abuses. It found that actually, indeed, she had known, and she'd done nothing about it. I mean, Julia, in terms of the outrage that you referred to, is this kind of gaining the same kind of traction that we saw in the US with the Harvey Weinstein case or indeed in the UK with the Jimmy Savile case? How are people reacting to this there? It is definitely on the same scale because we're talking about a man whose career spanned uh, over half a century and everyone knows who Johnny Kizugawa is in Japan. And even after the allegations came out, uh, um, after the documentary rather came out in March, people still had dismissed it as fake news that had been essentially made up by international media, that they were just rumor mongering, that there wasn't really any foundation to it. But now that this apology has come out, now that Judy Fujishima, Johnny Kitagawa's niece and the former head of the talent agency has come out and said that uh, has apologized, has resigned, uh, I think Japanese people are now going to come to terms with uh, just how systemic this abuse was and ask themselves some quite tough questions. The victims uh, in this case have said that they're happy, they're gratified that this, uh, this sexual abuse has finally been acknowledged. But the talent agency at the moment has uh, refused to change the name, which has drawn some ire. So it remains to be seen whether or not they will break with tradition, whether they will change the name and ho hopefully uh, turn a new chapter. Well, Julia, as you say, tough questions being asked and perhaps some soul-searching uh, nationally. For now, though, from Tokyo, thank you.